At the outset, I would like to say that it is an honor to share some memories of Dad on behalf of the siblings and Mom, and claim comfort in seeing the grace of God in a life lived well and in community, both in Three Hills and Central Alberta, and more intensively in the River of Blessing that has been Prairie Bible Institute and Prairie Schools and College. Dad was a family man. I remember going with him after we had moved to the duplex on 6th Avenue to Prairie Carpenter Shop. Dad purchased a quantity of plywood and in front of my biggest saucer's eyes cut it to size on the big commercial grade table saw, stained it, screwed it together into a sandbox, brought it home, and filled it with sand. Voila! Instant family and neighborhood attraction. It worked for both cars, trucks, and dollies. Dad loved his gardens. Prairie had a small gray tractor equipped with a set of discs. Dad would go and get it from the maintenance garage and driving it back and forth in the garden, render the thick black clay and manure into softness for planting potatoes, peas, beans, carrots, radishes, corn, and other summer garden plants. Within a few weeks, he would smile broadly, passing the serving bowl of radishes and early potatoes. Moving on into summer, I remember long daylight evenings spent in the kitchen with Dad snapping beans, shelling peas, and doing what needed to be done to get the produce blanched and in the freezer. This would be done to the background of Concert Hall from CHQR Calgary, an 8 to 10 p.m. gala of light classical music. Dad would tell us he didn't like the long hair box stuff, especially when you could listen to the Boston Pops Orchestra. Some prior resident had framed in a mini basement room under the front of our duplex, suitable for sitting in, but with no headroom for standing. Dad turned that into his home study, complete with a large plywood door and a padlock. We quickly figured out how to flop over the plywood door. Inside were wooden tangerine boxes stacked on their sides, proudly displaying Dad's working collection of years of sound engineering periodicals. He actually read and studied that stuff and used it in designing sound systems for Prairie. And I could count on hour-long lectures from him on the fine points of PA system applications. Dad stayed on the cutting edge of a discipline that was in radical advance, a quiet master and self-made engineer of sound reinforcement technology highly respected in this quirky trade in southern Alberta. Dad had a rather simple budgeting approach. If the money was there, spend it frugally and compassionately. In later years, when I pressed him over not writing out his budget, he told me to mind my own business. What this meant was he had always been good for a few bucks to replace the hockey sticks that couldn't withstand incessant slap shots, always ready to buy quality boots and backpack gear for my summer wilderness Christian camping programs, always ready to buy guitars for siblings, whether they used them much or not. Dad had a liberal, very relaxed attitude towards dating and courtship. When I razzed him about Abraham finding a wife for Isaac, he simply said, I'm not Abraham. Another time, after a half hour of listening to my wandering frustrations and failed romantic approaches, he solved things by informing me he was getting sleepy, so could we let it rest for now? When I finally asked his blessing on proposing to Bev, much to my mom's horror and his delight, he quipped, No girl's good enough for my boy. Aging finds us all and marks us indelibly. In his early 60s, Dad entered a year of what we would call today burnout. It was painful to see his well-oiled routine grind to a halt. As he entered the canyon of frailty and recovery, I was leaving for a year of ministry service in Italy. I watched at a distance as he chose to not take the calming drugs, but to rest his mind in long walks, hot baths, and scripture meditation. This was also a time when praises of men were tested 
as there were fellow workers who turned on him for reasons known and unknown. Dad proved that the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it and are safe. The halcyon shining memories of both children and parents give way in ongoing dualities of children and grandchildren, of business risings and retirement, of racing cultural paradigms and unbending traditions back in the small town, of technical and market entries and discarding of husks of old technologies. I was not there, but one day, Dad stood nearby and watched as workers and machines wrenched down and flattened the finely engineered eight foot by four foot by four foot base woofer cabinets that had graced the catwalk level of the old prairie tab. He chose to, without rancor or bitterness, roll up the pain of obsolescence and entropy into his hope of God's good promises. Dad served on prairie staff his whole working life. And in retirement, he and Mom chose to continue to build into what lasts, people and God's Word. God's Word. As a teen in the 70s, I remember Dad sitting quietly in the early morning, reading Kenneth Taylor's Living Bible to himself, chuckling at the paraphrases in modern English. And, to the end, in his basement man cave, he did his projects and listened to his music and rested in God's words as a habit. He knew when his solitude was up, as my mom called him from her wheelchair by thumping loudly on the floor. There is much more I could say of Dad, teaching me to drive the car, of his conquering degenerative spinal discs with Dr. Smith's daily exercises, of evening teas with Fergus, Jenny, and Catherine, of jarring exhortations to not be Kirkish. At times, we painfully agreed to disagree, but the fruit of decades has been good, with grandchildren paying back the investments of their grandparents' child-rearing. What is this race we run in fits of clear vision and milky gloom? What are these prunings of life, bearing fruits of faith amid reversals? When are the first last and the last first? From our perspectives down under, we fuss and accommodate the things God does. But what is our hope? In whose love do we put our faith? When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly. But then, face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. And now endure faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love.